Hello, Mr. Westwater here, about to take you through how to draw graphical inequalities. So, there's a lot of videos out there talking about how to show graphical inequalities and you end up shading the region you want. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do it, but this time we're going to shade the unwanted region, leaving the required region. Um, there's a couple of reasons um, I would opt for this way. First and foremost, um, questions often do not specify shade the region, but state show by shading. Sometimes they do say shade the region, um, but you can actually apply the, show, uh, the shade the unwanted region method to get to the answer and then show the answer by shading afterwards by sort of inverting what you currently have. Um, but if you're doing something like the IGCSE, for example, they'll never actually say shade the region, they'll just say show by shading. And as long as you've got either the, the region shaded or unshaded, they'll give you the marks for it. Um, I also think it's easier. So you don't have to worry about all of the regions if there's multiple inequalities in a question. Um, you just need to take one at a time and you can fully finish that answer before you then go and um, carry on with the rest of the question rather than trying to mentally collate all of your answers in one place and then give an answer. So, um, before we begin, there's a couple of um, basic ideas I want us to think about with the inequality signs. If we have a strictly less than or strictly greater than sign, we're going to be doing a dotted line, something like this. Okay. However, if we've got an or equal to element, then we'll need a solid line. Okay. These are things to look out for as well when we're trying to interpret um, a region that's being shaded. And we're going to follow these steps. So firstly, we're going to draw the line as if our inequality is equals. Okay, so if I'm dealing with y is less than x, for example, I'm just going to draw the line of y equals x. Then we're going to pick a nice point. I'll, I'll talk about what a nice point is um, a little later. Um, but it's, if it's got a zero in or um, a one in, then those are relatively nice points because they're easy to substitute in. And it's important that we pick a point either side of the line. It can't be on the line, otherwise it's going to be equal to. Okay? So we pick a nice point either side of the line and see if it works. This will then identify which region we need to shade. So we shade or cross out, you can think about it as crossing out the, the wrong side. So if your inequality doesn't work, then that's obviously the wrong side of the line. Whereas if you'd have picked a point on the other side of the line, it would work and you'd want to leave that blank and cross out or shade the other side. And then finally, we label the correct region with R. So we're going to go through these four steps with three inequalities down here. We're just going to take it one at a time, but if we go through the unshaded region route, we, do, we can sort of ignore the other inequalities and, and just think about one, one at a time. So let's start with um, this one here. Uh, so y is greater than x minus 2. So what was my first step? Draw the line as if it were equals. Okay. Now when I draw this line, I'm also going to be thinking about is it greater than or is it greater than or equal to, that sort of thing. This doesn't have an equal to element, so when I draw my line, I'm going to make sure it's dashed. Okay. So let's think about y equals x minus 2. In fact, let's actually go back to writing normally. So let's think about y equals x minus 2. Well, this is in the form of mx plus c. So our gradient is 1. So it's 1x. And our plus c is that minus 2. So if I start at minus 2, or you could do a table of values if you're, if you're not too confident with drawing lines. But I like to think about it as I'm starting at minus 2 and I'm going one across and I'm going one up for every one I go across because my gradient is one. So it should end up looking something like this. Okay, so one across, one up, one across, one up, all the way along. 
and a y-intercept of minus 2. And I've drawn a dashed line, as I said earlier, because there's no or equals to as part of this inequality. OK. Let's have a think about um, the next step. So I'm going to pick a nice point either side of the line and see if it works. So a good point to pick here would probably be 0, 0. Yeah, let's pick 0, 0. It's not on the line. X and Y are the same. Um, so it doesn't really matter which way we go about. I like to write X and Y above this as well, just in case. And often, if, say, you pick um, 1, 2, so this point here, some people do get confused with what's X and what's Y, and especially if it's Y equals X minus 2. That's the other way around to the coordinates. So something to be aware of here. But I'm picking 0, 0. So let's substitute these values in to y, x minus 2. So this is the next step. Um, so y, oh sorry, y is greater than x minus 2. So let's substitute this in. 0 is greater than 0 minus 2, so 0 minus 2. Now, is this a correct statement? Well, yes, it is, because 0 is greater than minus 2, which indicates that this side is all correct, which means the other side is all wrong. So now I shade or cross out the side that doesn't work. So let's cross or shade this all in. I know I've got two other inequalities to go, but I don't really care about that just now. I just want to focus on those. Okay. Now let's move on to 3x plus 4y is less than or equal to 12. So we've got x and y on the same side. A good technique if we've got x and y on the same side. Let's think about 3x plus 4y equals, not 0, equals 12. Is to draw a mini table of that. <laughs> yeah table of values where we think about what happens if x equals 0 and what happens if y equals 0. If x equals 0, then 3x becomes 0, so we're just left with 4y equals 12. And if 4y equals 12, then y has to equal 3. Okay, which gives me the coordinates 0, 3. We can plot that. 0, 3 is up here. And if y is 0, then essentially 4y becomes 0. So our equation is just 3x equals 12, which gives us an x value, if 3x equals 12, of 4. And the coordinates of 4, 0. 4, 0 is over here. So now I need to draw the line. So I'm looking again at the inequality this time we've got an or equals sign, so I need to have a solid line going through these points. Okay, so here we go, something like that. I'm going to carry it on all the way through and beyond, something like this. Okay, so there's my line. And again, now I move on to pick a point a nice point either side of the line and see if it works. I'm going to carry on with 0, 0. It's, it worked for me before. I'm going to carry on with it again. So let's write out the inequality. 3x plus 4y is less than or equal to 12. So 3x plus 4y is less than or equal to 12. Well, if we substitute in 0 and 0, this is just 0 is less than or equal to 12 again this works, which indicates that this side of the line all works, and this side is going to be all wrong. So let's cross out the incorrect side. So I can do this. So if I'm just thinking about these two inequalities, I know that everything left is the region that works. This would be R. However, we do have one more region to go. x is greater than 1. So let's think about x equals 1. Well, 
Well, if it's just x equals or just y equals, these are either horizontal or vertical lines, and often people get confused which way round they go. If you're unsure, think of a few coordinates where x equals 1. So you could have 0, oh sorry, that's not, that's, x is 0 there. You could have 1, 3, we could have 1, 4, and if we plot these, you've got this coordinate, this coordinate, you can see it's going to actually be a vertical line upwards going through 1. Now we ask, is it a solid line or a vertical, oh, sorry, is it a solid line or a dashed line? This one would be a dashed line because it, there's no or equals to. So now I draw a vertical line all the way down, going through 1, like this. And my last step, again, pick a nice point either side of the line and see if it works. So again, we can use 0, 0. And our inequality is x is greater than 1. So x is greater than 1. So if I substitute in 0, 0, again, we're not using these coordinates. These were coordinates on the line. So let's substitute in 0, 0. Well, x is 0 here. So 0 is greater than 1. Is this a correct statement? Actually, this one is not correct. So th that indicates that this coordinate on this side is all wrong and everything on this side up to the right of the line is correct okay so ooh, whoops oh, I just want to there we go so I'm going to cross out everything on the left hand side of this region okay I'm just thinking about it line by line and now we can look at our final answer the only space that's left is this in the middle, so this is our region R. Okay? By doing it this way around, we can commit to each inequality in order and put everything on paper, rather than trying to work out everything and keep those ranges sort of hovering or thinking, trying, yeah, trying to collate it all at the end. This just gives us an answer as it is. Okay? Do remember to always label your final region R.